In this three steps to sketch, we're going to graph y equals cotangent of 4x. I call this a basic cotangent graph because there is no shifting involved. So we don't shift vertically or horizontally. We don't have those phase shifts, what we call horizontal shifts. Um, and so we can use our basic method. So here is the outline for the basic three steps to sketch method for cotangent graphs. In step one, we get organized. We find all our essential information so that in step two, we can easily plot the base pattern. And step three, just sketch it in and repeat. So let's do this for y equals cotangent 4x. If you need a reminder, here's the general form for unshifted cotangent graphs. It's y equals a cotangent bx. And that's nice to recall because look at step one, our first essential information is to identify a and b. So a is that leading coefficient right in front of cotangent. And in our case, it's an understood one. Okay, so a is one, and that's going to help us find the y coordinates for our some of our points in our base pattern. Okay, b is the coefficient of x. In this case, it's a four. So that tells us something nice to kind of keep a, a broad mindset. We should have four cycles happening between zero and pi. Um, and so we'll check that at the end of graphing. B also helps us find the period. There's a quick little formula, pi over b for cotangent graphs. So that'll help you find the period. So ours will be pi over four. Remember, period's just the length of one horizontal cycle. Now we can think about our scale labels. You can label your tick marks for your axes however you like, but I think it helps to be really intentional about the horizontal labels. And so what I like to do is take the period and divide by four. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Pi over four divided by four, same thing as times one fourth. And we should use pi over 16 as our value for our tick marks. So we'll count by increments of pi over 16. And I do this because there are four key components in the base pattern and choosing the scale like this will ensure that each of the pieces aligns nicely with the horizontal tick marks. It creates a nice, neat and accurate graph. All right, so we'll label out in a minute the vertical scale label. I don't think you have to be as picky about uh, one usually works well. So let's label our axes now, starting with the horizontal axis. Let's count by pi over 16. So one pi over 16. 2 pi over 16 reduces to pi over 8, 3 pi over 16, 4 pi over 16 reduces to pi over 4. Pause here. This number should match the period if you've done it right using the specific method. And it does, so we should feel comfortable. Let's keep counting. We have 5 pi over 16, 6 pi over 16 reduces to 3 pi over 8, 7 pi over 16, and 8 pi over 16 reduces to pi over 2. So if you're working along with me, let's pause, get the negative part of this axis labeled. It's all the same, just with negative signs, and then we'll come back for the vertical axis. All right, so here is the axis fully labeled, and let's label that vertical axis as well, count by ones. So we have one, two, three, and negative one, negative two, and negative three. All right. Before we move on to step two, there's one more thing I like to find. That's the asymptote generating equation. So if you like a formula, here it is. This works for the unshifted cotangent asymptotes. X equals zero plus pi over B K. And this works because we know for the parent graph of cotangent, that's Y equals cotangent X. The asymptote starts at X equals zero or it's on the Y axis. And then the asymptotes happen once a period. And that's what that pi over b k represents. So pi over b is your period, and then k is going to be any integer. Depending on what you substitute in, you'll get a different asymptote along down the line. Okay, so for our equation, our asymptote gener generating equation will be x equals zero plus pi over four k. And I like to go ahead and substitute in a few values for k here, just mentally, so I know where to expect my asymptotes on the graph. So if k is zero, of course, your first asymptote is there at x equals zero on the y-axis. When k is one, of course, it's pi over four. When k is two, there's one at pi over two. k negative one or negative two, you have negative pi over four, negative pi over two. And that's just a nice way to double check the accuracy of your graph. 
So with that piece in place, I think we're ready to go on to step two where we plot the base pattern. So the base pattern for cotangent graphs that are unshifted will be asymptote, point, I call this the upper curve, curve shaping point, zero, aka the x-intercept, and then the lower curve shaping point. Remember, a cotangent graph in general kind of looks like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot the space pattern. Starting at the y-axis, we have our asymptote here at x equals zero. Our first curve shaping point is going to happen at that first horizontal tick mark at pi over 16. And remember, we said that a is going to help us find the y-coordinate here. So for this upper curve shaping point, you just take the value of a as it is. So our point is here at pi over 16, comma 1. Our next component is our 0, and it happens at the second horizontal tick mark to the right. So 0 at pi over 8. And our lower curve shaping point happens at the next tick mark. So at 3 pi over 16, and you get the y coordinate, look to a again, just take the opposite value, so it'll be a negative one. And this is our first cycle of cotangent 4x. Let's move on to step three, let's sketch this in. So our curve looks just like this. And we have one cycle of y equals cotangent 4x. Now it's the really easy part, it's the repetition. Uh, the great thing about trig graphs is that they are cyclic or repetitive. So let's just repeat this pattern over again, starting going to the right. Here's that asymptote at pi over 4. Remember that's the asymptote you get if you let k equal 1 in this asymptote generating equation. Okay, so it goes asymptote, upper curve shaping point, 0, lower curve shaping point. If you wanted to keep going, go ahead and put that asymptote there. That's when k equals 2. You get one at pi over 2. So we'll sketch that in. Second cycle. Looks nice. And we can work in the other direction as well. So there are kind of two ways to go about working backward. I think some people like to just work backward. Lower point, 0. Upper point, asymptote. That's the one when k equals negative 1. Or you may like to count 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to the left, 4 tick marks to the left and work the pattern in the forward direction. So you could say asymptote, upper point, zero, lower point. It's really whatever you prefer. All right, so here are these curves sketched in, and this is going to be four cycles of y equals cotangent 4x. Now, as we finish, I do like to go back to the b value. We said b was four, and that told us there should be four cycles that happen between zero and pi. And even though we don't actually show all the way out to pi, I think it's easy to see that because we have two cycles, one, two, that happen between zero and pi over two, it would make sense that two additional ones would happen between pi over two and pi, so four. And that's just another way to double check yourself. So hopefully this helped you feel really confident in using this method, three steps to sketch, to graph an unshifted cotangent graph. Um, I'll post links in the video description if you want to check out more examples of graphing cotangent, um, and I'll also have links for graphing any of the other trig functions as well. Thanks for watching.